wanted to talk today about why I think it's important to fail programming interviews. And what I mean by that is I think that you have to fail a lot of programming interviews before you can really get good at them. Because I think it's a, a, it's a, it's a skill like anything else. Like if you take a test, you're going to study a lot for the test. And those are, those are tests. You have to study for them to, you know, do well at them. And I think the only way you're going to study is if, you know, you just go through the process. You interview and you just keep interviewing and you just fail and fail until you succeed. I remember, I remember, I, I failed. Oh, let me. I should say this first. I failed so many programming interviews. I've had so many. I've had so many where I've just sat there. My mind has just gone completely blank. I had no idea what to do, and I literally just sat there. I didn't type anything, and it was like ten minutes before the hour was up, and I had just put like just horrible code and just like the worst explanations and like pseudo code on, on the word document and it, I, I, I knew like 20 minutes into it that I wasn't going to get it so it was like the 40 minutes I was just like sweating and just like super anxious and like it was bad but that was early on that was when I was in college and I had a number of those after right like I've had like probably five or six of like of that exact scenario happening to me happened to me before I started to kind of get you know, okay at it and like learn maybe what questions to ask or like how to talk about the problem as you're thinking about it and how to write some code, um, at least to show the intent of what you're trying to do. Because I think what happens, and I, I still fall into this trap, like you worry so much about the syntax being perfect when you kind of, and you forget like to actually articulate how you're going to solve the problem and like show the intent with your code um, because that's well I should say that's hopefully what the interviewer is really asking right like they should be asking like how are you going to approach solving the problem as opposed to looking at perfect syntax because it depends how the interview is formatted some interviews may be just a, a, a text editor some may be like an online format um, like a leak code style question or something like that. Some may have their own proprietary system that they administer it through. You, ne you never really know until you get to that step. And it's important that you get to that step a number of times so you can fail and fail and just kind of get up, you know, develop the, the muscle memory of those interviews. Because I, when I had my first interview, my first technical interview, I, I mean, I was unbelievably nervous, right? Like I, I, I studied and watched so many videos of like people talking about technical interviews and like what to expect. And I just was like, oh my goodness, this sounds like the hardest thing. I've <laughs> this sounds like all, this sounds like the culmination of all my exams, like in one, it's not so bad, but you have to be okay to fail. Like you have to be okay at failing it, right? You have to be okay with that because that's how you learn and that's how you get better. But you have to be okay with failing. You have to be okay with just <laughs> just doing horrible at these interviews uh, it, just to get better. And if it takes you five times, it takes you five times. It, it, for me, it took like six or seven before I felt like I could actually like <laughs> even write code in the interview. Um, and I just did horrible on so many of those. I, I remember, again, sitting in some of those online interviews where it's like, they're watching you, you're sitting there in a room, you're trying to think of like code to write, my mind would just go completely blank. I would, it's like, I felt as if I had never written any code before. I'm, I'm like, I could barely even write an if statement. I'm like, oh my goodness, what's the syntax for that? Like, I literally felt like I was like, am I even like, have I, have I even been like doing the right kind of programming up to this point? It was, it's crazy, but that's how you're going to feel that's that's normal it's totally fine you're gonna fail at some of them and that's perfectly fine it, it's all helps you it all helps you to build up that memory and build up that that skill it's like anything else like having conversations with people that's a developed skill interviewing is a developed skill uh, and unfortunately technical interviews you just have to get through them it's just a part of this job you just have to be able to talk about your job in a way that's, you know, uh, 
make sense and articulate. Like, that's just something you have to do. You're not going to get around technical interviews. Um, for me, I, studying looked a lot like, did a lot of reading. I practiced a lot of uh, leak code style questions. Um, I just in general just asked a lot of questions on uh, like forums like Stack Overflow and now ChatGPT and things. I just tried to figure out like, okay, like what kind of questions do I think that they're going to ask me? And then what type of problems do I think that they're, that I may see come on the interview? Um, and honestly, the best advice I have for preparing is just to read as much as you can. I ought to be honest with you, there's such a wide number of topics that could be asked about. And if you begin reading at an early stage, you're going to be amazed at how much you remember, how many topics that you're going to just recall like during like the interview that you didn't even think of. So honestly, if you're still in school, I you know, to really try to hone in on studying and reading and then just find additional books on software engineering, the software development, whatever uh, whatever focus area that you want to get into and just read as much as you can. It doesn't have to be like ultra technical like research papers, but it needs to be something that is a book where somebody's talking about the process of learning. So sometimes that's like uh, uh, sometimes that's like those like packet publishing books that like somebody writes. Those can kind of be a hit or miss. Um, Manning Publishing is really good. They usually have really top tier uh, material. Um, and then a lot of like the just ebooks on like uh, any of like the big like you know .net has like their published ebook that they have out on a number of topics. So really just try to discover what resources are available for the technology that you're focusing in, because that's probably where the questions are going to be pulled from, right? Like that is the source material, the documentation or this ebook or, you know, these other external study guides here or, you know, over here, that's the source material, right? If somebody was to ask a question, they probably pull from that. Now that's for the more conversational interviews for the, for the, just like the raw, like technical interview where it's just, you know, you're given a, a problem and you have to, you know, solve the problem on a whiteboard or um, on a text editor or a, um, like a live, like code environment. Um, that's a different story. That one, that you're, you're just going to have to get used to writing um, standard algorithms. Like, you know, just make sure you can just r write loops. Uh, you know, it, it, just stick to the basics. I mean, I wouldn't say that you have to memorize like every single search algorithm that there is because you're never, unless you spend, I mean, over a year just just grinding leak code. I mean, which you might have to do, um, but it really just try to stick to the fundamentals and basics starting out. And as you kind of gone through, as you go through more and more technical interviews, you kind of get a feel for what focus area that you'll have to um, stick to is. But honestly, like, just try to get as many as you can technical interviews um, because that's the only way you're going to get better. For me, after I failed uh, my first technical interview, I was super discouraged. I felt like I was like, I had like max, you know, imposter syndrome. I was like, ah, you know, I don't know if this is for me. Like, I feel like people are way smarter than me. Like, I feel like I should have, you know, known that, had a, the solution to that and stuff like that. All those thoughts are going to go through your head, and that's totally normal. Like, I still have all those thoughts, to up, you know, today. But just understand that that is not, those thoughts are not true and that you'll get better and that after each and every interview, you will continue to hone your skills. And it's just a matter of when you'll pass the technical interview. And it may take you a month, it may take you three, it may take longer, but it doesn't matter because all you need is one, right? And it's just kind of a numbers game at that point, unfortunately, or you just have to keep applying and keep interviewing and just getting better. But 
at the end when you got it, you're gonna be super happy. It it's just it's a really good feeling. Um, there's look technical interviews are just it's it's a touchy topic because everybody knows that they're kind of bad, right? Like they're just like the thing like you just have to get past in this job, and there's no way around them. So you know just study as much as you can for it, and you'll be you'll be totally fine. Like look, it's like. The person interviewing, like, they went through the same process as you, right? Like, unless you get somebody who's just trying to, you know, give you a hard time, which, unfortunately, I think uh, people probably do some sometimes, but, you know, they went through the same process as you. Like, they understand what's what's happening, and, uh, you know, just, just try to try to see the interviewer as an actual person too, right? Like who has gone through the process as well. Um, and hopefully they see you as an actual person too, right? <laughs> because yeah, I've, I've had some bad interview experiences, but hopefully things will get better in, in interviews. Hopefully technical interviews will lose some of their, their stigma, but hopefully, hopefully we can just be nice to people in general in technical interviews. Like, Hopefully we can come to a point where we can just help each other out on these kind of things and and then we can all improve. So anyway, that's my that's my two cents on technical interviews. Well so anyway, I'll see you on the next one.